All right, yeah. Uh, let's start again. Yeah, uh, so the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, create a project, of course. Uh, I'm just going to call this particle workshop. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, and we're going to be using the high definition render pipeline. Uh, this was made in Unity 2019.4.2 F1. I think it works on later versions, but I haven't tested it. So I uh, do not know for sure. Uh, and so while we're waiting for Unity to actually create the project, which it'll take like five, 10 minutes, you know how it is. Um, I'll talk a little bit about like the concept behind the effect. Um, and like what this is supposed to be. So uh, this is for a game lab game that we we're making this semester called Drosera. Uh, in that game, we have our, a character whose code name is uh, the Gunner, uh, and they have like a normal shot, which is just shooting normal bullets out of like an automatic rifle. Uh, and then they have a secondary shot, which is uh, it's an electric round. And the player can charge that up and shoot it, and it, it creates a big energy shock wave when it hits. Uh, and so for this workshop, I'm going to be taking you through how I made the electric round and kind of everything that goes into that effect. Um, and then you'll hopefully you will be armed with the knowledge to make many a thing in Unity. Uh, because this is a th this is a pretty complicated effect, uh, and I'm just going to turn myself on Do Not Disturb real quick. Hang on. All right. Uh, and so, like, my inspiration for this effect, like what I used for reference, um, initially, I my thought was. Oh, okay. Ball lightning is a, like a cool natural phenomenon. I bet if I copy some stuff from that, uh, I could get something that looks neat. And I tried to find a good reference of ball lightning. It turns out most pictures of it are are kind of low res. It's not a very common thing. Uh, so like I have a few reference images, but I mostly just like had an idea of how this should look in my head uh because i was like oh this is what ball lightning looks like right and it, it kind of i was kind of right in what i thought it looked like but the effect is cool so all right so when you uh when you like start it up uh hdrp the HD render pipeline wizard is going to ask if you want to update and uh nah who cares um if you're doing it like a full project maybe you would but uh for the purposes of this tutorial I'm not going to be doing that uh let's put I'm going to put my game window up here I sometimes have it out to test shit out um okay so now that the project has been built uh, you're going to take the package that you downloaded. Uh, hopefully, you downloaded it before this. If you didn't, uh, go do that. And we're going to import that. You can just drag it and drop it. Uh, and just import everything. Uh, I think this will overwrite the sample scene, which wasn't intentional, but it is something I figured out when I was testing this out. Uh, and it's fine. You know, uh, I was going to ask you to go to the demo scene anyway, so having it do that automatically is totally fine. OK. So uh, in this demo scene, uh, you can see that we already have the uh, finished version of the effect. Uh, this is under. Uh, it's in the folder electric round. If you go here, you can see there's the complete version. Uh, and so let's go to game mode and let's see what this looks like. So you can see it kind of has these particles bubbling off of it. 
uh, and if you hold it down, for some reason the plane will disappear, but only the first time you press spacebar. I don't know if that's just a Unity thing or if that's a, a bug or I'm not sure, but it has been happening repeatedly. Uh, but yeah, you hold it down, it charges up, and if you let it go, it can zoom out like that. Uh, and by it, I mean if you hold spacebar down, it will do that. Uh, and then there's also like an uncharged version. Uh, and I like previewing from game mode because that way I can see what it's going to look like in the final product. Uh, but when I'm actually like going in and designing, I usually zoom in. Uh, and so now that we've seen what this is going to look like, let's start making it. So we're going to disable that. And we want to create a new uh, effect. So go to game object, effects, particle system, uh, and just zero this out. Uh, and make sure you zero out the rotation too. That'll be important later. Uh, I'm actually going to move this a bit to make it easier to deal with. Uh, OK. And so like this effect uh, has a few parts to it. Uh, the main thing with the particles themselves is kind of this cloud uh, that leaves behind a trail as it moves. And so to turn this cone into that, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is just make it so the particles stop moving, uh, because we're going to be moving that through the round itself, since that's going to be moving in game. Uh, and then. These are lasting a really long time, so let's go ahead and change that. Uh, I used uh, random between two constants here because I wanted this to. You often in particle effects uh, want to add variation because these are going to be used all over the place, and so if it's the same thing every time, uh, players are going to start to notice. Uh, and these are also really big. So uh, let's change up the start size, and we're going to make this random too. So this is also going to be a random between two constants, and we want to make this between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is make these appear faster, because uh, this is like a very sparse. This is very sparse right here, uh, and we want to have it be this like really active, uh, almost angry sort of effect. And so we're going to turn that up to 120. Uh, and at this point, you might be noticing there's like orange lines all over, which is useful for seeing, OK, where the different particles and how is that being differentiated. But it's really bad for seeing the final effect because you're never, it's not going to have this orange outline uh, in real time. And so what I usually do when I'm working on effect on an effect like this is I'll go into my gizmos, uh, and I will uncheck the selection outline so that I can just see what this is going to look like in the final product. Uh, and then I'm going to give people like a minute or two to catch up. I'll scroll up so you can see like everything I changed. So right now, we've changed the start lifetime from 5 seconds to 0 0.3 to 0 0.5, start size to 0 0.2 to 0.3, uh, and we've increased the rate over time to 120. OK. And I, I hope that's enough time. If anybody, uh, if anybody ever needs me to slow down, just let me know, uh, and I can totally do that. Um, so now. Uh, the round itself is like a, it's it's more spherical uh, as opposed to like this cone. And so we're going to take, so we're going to go from emitting in a cone to emitting in a sphere. Uh, and we want to like bring this in tighter. So we're going to set the radius to 0 0.15. Um, and it's more of an oblong <laughs> uh, sphere. So like, I just kind of played around with values to see what looks 
good, uh, or rather what conforms more to the model that we're going to be using. And so we're also going to want the set to set the Z scale to two here. Uh, all right, so kind of have a thing. This doesn't look that great yet. Uh, but you can see that these particles are kind of just like popping out of existence. And that looks really unnatural. That's not like a, a thing that happens uh, in in real life. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change their size over lifetime. Uh, and even just like clicking that checkbox, uh, you could see that it, it changed. But what we want them to do instead of expanding like this is we want them to slowly dissipate over time. Uh, so like to start that, I usually just click this option. This is a pretty good option most of the time. But in the case of this effect, uh, I wanted something that's like a little bit more drastic. Uh, and so we're going to add a key here and kind of push this down, change this key. Oh, to add a key, you right click on the curve. Uh, and then you, you see the add key button. If you like left click on these handles, you can change how it moves. And if you right click on this, you can change a bunch of things with it. Uh, you just like kind of mess around with it. You can do a lot here. Um, and so like just kind of messing around this, this is looking, this is looking all right. Um, but it's a little, too angry and so uh for for this system what i ended up doing was instead of just having it be a curve uh if you see here you you can make multiple curves and have it randomly like choose a value between them and so we're going to do that for this effect uh and basically all we want to do is take this down like this um, and probably mess with that a little bit. And then we want to do that. And now like this is still like a, an aggressive active effect, but it's not it's not quite as aggressive. You, you can see them a little bit more. It's a little bit smoother. Uh, and now now that we have like our basic size, our, our basic shape, uh, we want to add some color and so we can see what this is actually going to look like. Uh, and so what you could do, I did include all the materials, all the models, every texture I used and everything with this project. Uh, but I will also walk you through how you would make this if you wanted to make this by scratch. So to do that, um, Oh, I should leave up this curve. I should let people. <laughs> I'm gonna give people like a, a few seconds to to take a look at this, uh, so you can copy it if you want to or try out your own thing. Okay, cool. It just goes off. I guess I'm just doing nothing while we wait. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and make that material. So go to right click, create material, uh, name this, you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna name this uh, workshop particle. And we wanna change the shader here because one of the one of the reasons we're making a material is because we want it to be like a triangle shape. But the other reason is because the default HDRP materials don't work with the shuriken particle system, which is what we're using. Um, and the reason, and like Unity's HDRP, they're trying to switch over to FX graph, which the default materials do work for, but we're using the older system, uh, frankly, because it's, it's the one I know better. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to have to use a special shader, which is also included in the package. Um, this is particle unlit emissive. Uh, I usually just type in the search bar here. I find it 
easier than going through the drop downs and looking every time. Uh, and so we're going to take that. Uh, and then we're going to need to do a few things here. So we want to take our surface type from opaque to transparent because we're going to be putting in a texture which is a, a transparent triangle. And so instead of it being these square planes, it's going to be triangles. Uh, and that makes it look a bit more dangerous. Uh, like psychologically, people see spikes and, and sharp edges and think danger, which is like, this is an attack. So we want it to read as kind of dangerous, kind of angry. Uh, and so we're going to set this to transparent. Uh, we want to change the blending mode because it looks weird if you don't. <laughs> uh, the the thing is, we want to change it from alpha to additive because the math that makes these particles emissive is uh, it it multiplies things, and if you don't make it additive, you get some very strange results. Uh, and so now we're gonna go to the albedo field. You see where it says none texture. Uh, you want to hit select on that and. I'm just going to search for T underscore triangle two. Uh, and so if you click on that, it will look like it's just white. But if you've seen the preview, it actually has a thing. Um, we're going to want to click on double sided. Or do we, do we actually need to? I don't think you need to for this. Um, double sided just means if you look at the back side, uh, it will be there. Usually with planes, they only have one side. Uh, but in this case, it's always going to be facing towards the camera because the particle system will do that for you by default. So we don't need to worry about it. Uh, and so we want to turn our intensity. This is your emission intensity. We want to turn this up to 5. Uh, and you'll see like kind of some fuzz. Uh, that is like completely invisible from the actual angle that the game is at. So don't worry about it. It's based, it's really hard to see in play. So just don't worry about it. All right. So now that we've made this texture, we're going to go to our renderer node in the particle system. And if you see, it says material, and it's got default HD particle material. We want to just drag and drop our workshop particle texture or material into that. And we can already see it's got triangles. But uh, they're always facing up. And that just kind of looks odd. It just kind of looks off. Um, it looks really artificial. Uh, and so what? we're going to do is we're going to give it a random starting rotation, and then we're also going to make them rotate over time randomly. Uh, and so first, we we want to do go to starting rotation and change it from a constant to random between two constants. And we're just going to make this between 0 and 360. And that's already looking better. Uh, and then we're going to take our rotation over lifetime, which is here. Uh, and we want to go to this angular velocity, change this to be a random between two constants, uh, and make this between negative 360 and 360. And that's like, it's a lot faster than the default settings, but we need to make it faster because, um, honestly, these particles don't last a long time and it's pretty hard to tell that they're rotating at all unless you have high values. Uh, especially from the long distance. To be honest, this is probably not super necessary, but it looks nice close up, and I like polish. Uh, one thing, one last thing we want to do. Uh, well, there's a few last things we want to do. The first thing is, if you noticed with the final version of this, uh, this is kind of like a pink color, uh, and the particles right now are just white. So we're going to want to change that. Uh, and this is one of the reasons that we had to make a particle material. Uh, and so I just like some sort of pink. Um, I happen to know the exact hex code value for this. Uh, the hex code value we're using in this palette is FF8080. 
And so uh, I'm going to set it to that. And then I'm also going to click this button in under swatches to add it to the swatches because we're going to be using this color a lot. <laughs> All right. So now this is starting to get a lot closer to like what the final effect looks like. But if you see, when we move it, it's not really creating a trail at all. Uh, and the reason for that is that our simulation space is set to local. So as you move the parent transform, it's carrying it. So it's a really easy fix. All we need to do is click on the simulation space box and change it from local to world. And now, oh, and now if you see when we move it, we'll leave them behind in world space, and that's a really nice trail. Um, and this this looks pretty good, but it is a little bit uniform. And so the last sort of finishing touch that we want on this, um, well, the last finishing touch until we add a model, because we're going to make a few changes then. Uh, is we want to go in and add some noise. Um, and so what noise does is it basically randomly adjusts the position of a particle as it's being spawned. Uh, based on a math, I, I'm sure there's a lot of like vector math involved. Uh, but I, frankly, that's a, that's a little above my pay grade. <laughs> Uh, and so we're going to want to do, we're going to want to add some noise so that it doesn't look so perfectly uniform. Uh, and so we want to change the strength by default is a little bit strong here. So we want to change this to like a 0 0.6 around there. Um, and also this is kind of the same thing every time, because if you'll like, if we just leave it here, it's it's just kind of doing the same thing, and that's because our scroll speed isn't is set to zero. So this is just it's using the same texture every time, and so we want to turn we want to have a, a slight scroll speed so that it doesn't look quite so uniform. And now, as you can see, uh, the noise is actually changing over time, here and here. Uh, and as we leave it behind, the trail kind of almost looks like it's being picked up by the wind. All right. So that is mostly it for the particle effect. So now uh, what we want to do is, well, really what we should have done is, is named this something. Uh, I'm going to name this PS for particle system and then call this like electric particles. Should have done that at the beginning, but oh well. Um, so now I'm going to teach a little thing with modeling. Uh, so when you create a model in Maya and bring it into Unity, um, you can see that there's a thing here under the Materials tab that's called On Demand Remap. And so basically, if you make a material and put it in here, it will take whatever map corresponds to this in Maya and just like automatically apply the material in Unity. So if we put in the electric part, uh, if we put in the model, you can see that it already has the material and also that it's being, that it has light probes, which uh, that's a, it's a lighting thing. Um, so yeah. So we don't even have to make a material for this one. Uh, I will like, I'll walk through the steps but it's a little tedious. So it, honestly, uh, don't feel like you have to do this. Uh, you can just drop the model in your scene. Uh, and afterwards, we're going to put the electric particles on top of the model so that they become a child and zero out the position so that they are always uh, connected to it. So I'm going to go to my assets, create material, uh, we're going to call this like M underscore uh, uh, like electric ground workshop or something.
Uh, and there's a few things that we need to do here. Uh, we need to change our base map color from this white to the same pink that we used before. So just click on the swatch, and I'll do it for you. Um, we need to go ahead, go down to our emission inputs and check use emission intensity. We want to turn this up to 50 nits. Uh, our emissive color should be that same pink color that we were using before. And then we're going to want to change our exposure weight from 1 to 0 0.08. And this, uh, if we go to the model and put this in, it's it's the same as the electric ground, uh, as the thing that's already on it. Yeah. Uh, and we could show that by just like changing some values. And so yeah, so that's the material for the model. And then like one last thing that, and then we have one last thing to do with the particle system here. So we want to go here, and if you if we play the particles now, this looks pretty good, but the particles are spawning inside the model as well as outside of it. And really, what we want is to just kind of have them spawn close to the model's surface. And so a real easy way to do this is we can just change our radius thickness. Uh, if we make that smaller, then it will just put them around the models outside. And so we're going to take that from 1 and bring that down to 0 0.23. And then uh, if you look, it's kind of hard to tell because the particles are going. But uh, if we just like, hmm. yeah, if we stop, uh, you can see that this aligns really closely with the model by default. And then one last thing to like complete this effect is we need to put a trail on this, and then we're going to need to animate it. Um, and to animate it, we're going to be using some scripts that I prepared if we have time, I can walk through them and explain like what they're doing and, and how they're doing it. Uh, but realistically, you could probably do this in an animation. I just I, I wanted to make it so I could change the like properties really easily and so it could be used uh, basically anywhere with a very simple interface. So I, I made some scripts and yeah. So uh, first, before we make the trail, you need a material for your trail. So we're going to make that. So m underscore like trail workshop. Uh, and this is going to use the same shader that the particles are using, but without the triangle texture. So particle, unlit emissive, transparent additive. Uh, in this case, we only want the intensity to go up to 2. Uh, and that's it. So now, on the electric ground, you're going to go to Add Component, Trail Renderer. Uh, and we're going to change a few things on the Trail Renderer, because if we, oh yeah, add, put the material in first. Go to your materials. Add that in. Uh, we're going to change a few things on this trail renderer, because right now it's it's just a white bar. Uh, and so uh, the first thing that we want to change is it stays out for way too long. So we're going to change our time to 0 0.35. Uh, and we move this around. That's a much, uh, it's a much more reasonable time frame. Uh, we want to change our width up here down to 0 0.3 uh, so that this actually follows behind it. Um, we're going to want to change our color again. Uh, and trails always use a gradient, but we want the same color on both sides. So you're going to uh, so you're going to click on the little marquee at the bottom here on the left. Go to your color, click on that and change that to the pink we were using earlier. Click on the marquee on the right, 
same thing. All right. And then the width, uh, we want to add in some keys to make this, like, to change the length up. Uh, and make this. And make it so that it tapers nicely, like that. All right, um, and that is that's basically it for the trail. So now all that's left to do is animate it, and uh, and then the the effect is done. <laughs> uh, so oh, real quick before you put on the scripts that that do the animations, uh, you need to add a rigid body first, or else it 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 won't work. So going to add a rigid body component. Uncheck use gravity, because we don't want it to just fall through the ground forever. And then under your electric ground folder in your scripts, uh, you want to attach two things here, electric ground expand fire and electric ground driver. And so basically, this has all the logic, which makes it expand and shoot. And this has all the logic that will actually do those things. Uh, and now the effect is done. Except let's turn off cast shadows, because this should not be a thing that casts shadows. And I'm pretty sure we need to do that here also. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. And... I uh, just like real quick if we turn both of them on. Same. Okay. Uh, do people want me to like kind of get into how the script works and like what what is going on in the animation, or or <laughs> or would you rather just like ask me ask me any questions you have? Uh, or have me go back over how I did the thing, or like what my thought process was, anything like that. Uh, Feel free to type it in chat or unmute yourselves. Uh, I guess I'll. I'll speak and say I I wouldn't mind seeing maybe just a little bit of the code. Uh, I'm in just in my cases. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so like the first the first thing is, uh, I guess probably the the less the less interesting thing is there's like I made a uh I made a struct to hold a bunch of data that you need to like animate in order for this effect to look cool uh as you scale it up. And also going to open up this as I, oh, right, I can't because it's starting up Visual Studio. I wish I could open both of these at the same time. Okay, yeah, so there's like a few things that we need to store uh, in order to like animate. And the so you need to store the radius, uh, which is like this is five out of six of these are for the shape mo node. Um, so you need to store like the radius of the sphere that you're emitting from, the thickness, uh, the emission rate, which is not part of the shape node. Uh, and then you also need to store the uh, the like 
lifetime of the trail and the trail width, and there, there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, but basically, we're storing some data because we need to change all of these parameters. And then in the in the code here, um, there's two methods. One is a, is a pretty basic fire method. It just uh, just takes in a speed and direction and moves the thing in that direction. Uh, and then for the rest of it, this is this is like the the main thing. So it takes in your starting scale. Uh, so how big it was when it started, how big you want it to be at the end, uh, the amount of time it should take to reach that size, and then also all of the other stuff <laughs> that you need to change. Uh, you might have guessed that I I started with just having each one be in. A, an individual parameter and then decided, hey, I need a struct for this, because that's accurate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that this is changing, which is why I really think this maybe should have been an animation, but it's OK. This this one is, is more friendly for a programmer to interface with. Uh, and so basically, if you were going to run this code uh, every single frame, you would want to call your charge, uh, and I'm pretty sure there's an overloaded method that just takes the start the charge time. Uh, so basically, there are a bunch of default values that I've put in as like, oh, okay, this looked cool, so let's save that, and it will lerp your the size of the thing from the start to the end based on how long has elapsed, uh, and it's important that you call this every frame that you're charging because otherwise it it won't track the progress accurately. Uh, but yeah, basically it's a it's a lot of lerping between values. That's uh, that's most of it. Uh, are there any any other questions or anything that people want me to like go back through? It doesn't have to be about this effect specifically. It could be about particle effects in general, uh, you know, or or just like a, a random question, I guess. Um, what you said you built this for a project you're working on. What's that project? Or maybe uh, yeah, this is. Uh, I made this for Drosera. Uh, it is the game lab game. Ellie, another one of our creative, uh, another one of our officers, is the creative director. Uh, the oh, other wow. Andrew is programming lead. It's a big game lab team, uh, also in the SGDA. But yeah, um, this was made for like a top-down sort of action roguelike. Uh, cool. That's really cool. I noticed the fun fact with how you programmed <laughs> the uh, the space bar. If you tap it multiple times, it speeds up the particle. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just adding since it just adds velocity. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it'll it'll speed it up. I'm pretty sure it doesn't do that in the actual game because this was just like a script I I made real fast to uh, kind of test it out. But yeah. <laughs> I have to test that real quick. <laughs> it's pretty entertaining, actually. <laughs> really cool. Uh, another Unity fun fact: uh, if you go to like your seed view and you click on a thing and hit, uh, I'm gonna have to make this be moving first so that this does anything. Uh, so like, if I go here and hit Shift F, it'll it'll just keep following it. Which is neat. Hmm. Well, uh, all right. Uh, I mean, if there aren't any questions, uh, was it? 
was everyone able to follow along? <laughs> I hope I didn't go too fast. <laughs> I was able to follow along at the very least, so thanks. You got me. Yeah, you definitely did good. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, this one... I, I assumed this was going to take longer, because I'm like, oh, I have four pages of notes. Uh, this effect took me like four hours to make when I was just making it. But it's way shorter when you actually know what it's going to be at the end. Uh, but yeah, uh, if there's no questions, then I, I'm, I'm, I don't got anything else. So. Cool. Well, thanks for putting this together. Yeah, no problem. I thought this was going to take a lot longer. <laughs> Do you want to show any of the other VFX that you have there? Uh, or... yeah, I can. I can do that. Uh, if you have like a, you know, if you have a few minutes to wait for uh the project to open up, <laughs> might as well. I I know in particular like the uh as we had that that particle effect and then when it hits something there's that explosion. So like showing that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be neat. Um, I could also show off the chain lightning thing that I've I've just finished. Uh, or I didn't finish it, but I just did a first pass of it. In the lock on. I uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I've been... <laughs> you don't have to necessarily go through everything, uh, like how you built them. I think showing them off. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll show off the stuff I did. Um, also, props. Make sure to give Cramman props for that lock on too. Uh, I'm working off of a base that he created. So, thank you. <laughs> the the lock on particles are like pretty basic. I'm, but I'm really impressed with all the script work that you've been working on for that. Yeah. Oh, actually, I fucked it. I fu <laughs> I fucked with the the uh, things on that and made them less basic. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's like the size. There, there are two size functions which compete with each other because I needed a very specific thing to a behavior I could talk <laughs> about. Uh, and also now the starting speed is a random between two curves, so it did. It did get more complex. Nice. Okay. Well, in like half an hour, I'd be happy to see that when Unity opens. <laughs> yeah. I love. Uh, we've got a. Someone asked a question in the voice chat. Are there any particle settings you think are usually ignored but could be really cool? Uh, one thing that I've been working with recently, which I didn't know was a thing. Uh, and I don't know if this is like ignored or not. Um, but in the so there's like a trail system, uh, and normally what this does is it is it creates a trail behind every particle. And I would I would show it off, uh, but you need to like if you don't put in a trail, uh, like a trail material, it is just purple squares. Um. So I guess we could just like put this here, and that looks neat. Um, at this point, I'm just gonna move this away so we can see just the particle system. Uh, and if I was gonna do this, I would probably. And to show this off, I'm also gonna make the size of this really small. Uh, so you can see like, ah, this is just the trails are just following the particles. Okay. Um, but if you go into your trail component and change this mode from particles to ribbon, it will like draw a ribbon between them. And I don't know if this is like not used in the industry, but this is definitely a, a thing that was like pretty new to me. And so I'm like, oh, this is really cool. Uh, you know, you can use this for like lightning effects or an explosion. <laughs> uh, so yeah. it draws it between them instead of behind them? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It draws it between every particle. And if you have like oh, multiple man. trails, then uh it'll draw like multiple things. And if you have if you set the ribbon count to too many, it just won't draw any. 
because they're because everyone will be on one point. Uh, so like the maximum you can do without missing any ribbons is like half the number of particles you have. So in this case, it'd be like 25. As you can see, it's kind of fluctuating at around 50. Uh, and then you just get straight lines. But ribbons are pretty neat. Uh, nice. I, like I think I also kind of have an answer to that question. Um, you can actually pass particle data into a shader. So for the material that you've defined for your particles, you can control that like dynamically with your particle system and like have really cool like back and forth between how the material looks and your particle system behavior. Um, and so I actually had to use that recently. I can link that Andrew that bubble video. Ah, uh, yeah. I can put that in the chat. Um, yeah. Give me is, one second. That is pretty cool. Um. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's hard for me to like say what industry trends are overall because I'm just I'm not that aware. But I end up using most I I the things I usually end up using are like I'll often end up using velocity over lifetime to make something slow down. Uh because like if it if it's the same velocity every time, uh it kind of in a lot of ways, it, it doesn't look as natural as if it were to slow down. Uh, I didn't hear, but a lot of times I end up using that one. Um, and you can use this for like other stuff if you want to just have like a, a constant velocity in a direction. Oh, has Unity actually opened? Hey, I can, I can show off my my other stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I often use size for lifetime to make them shrink down because it looks better than just having them pop out of existence. Though you can also use like color to fade them out. Or do both at the same time. Um I use noise a lot, but I think that most people who work on particle effects use noise a lot. I I don't think I'm unique there. Uh yeah. I don't know. Uh also Nick you asked in the chat um for this I made a custom curve for the particle system so that there's kind of just this random variable that the particle system always keeps track of and um the particle system dynamically passes that into the material that's on each particle and so because it's a curve it's like changing over time for the life of the particle um and it it's like zero um oh man let me see if i can like describe this properly so uh, my little animation is really just the little pop of the bubble. Um, and so it's zero pop for most of the lifetime. And then right at a certain point, the curve just like goes up all at once. It would be so much better if I had my project open, but I do not. Um, if you're interested, you can feel free to DM me and I can show you more how I did it. Let's see, do I have the energy shockwave in here? I do. Okay. So I'm gonna turn this on and then turn on the test script so that we can just like play it over and over. Yeah, so when the electric round like hits something, it'll explode like this. Which is pretty neat. Uh and then let's see, what's some other stuff? Um some of this I will need to actually like run the scene again to get it to work. Actually, can you show that the particle shockwave with no ribbons drawn, with just the particles? Uh, it will look awful, but yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, yeah, that it's gonna look like really. That's so simple. Yeah, it's gonna look like lines. It's not gonna look. Uh, you're yeah. not gonna be able to see. Like, basically what this effect is, is it's a bunch of trails, uh, and it also has, uh, and then I have, like, separate spikes to really get that impact. But yeah, no, uh, the actual particles themselves, is, it's just like a sphere. Then how'd you get the, how'd you get the ribbons to, like, move around like that and look so noisy? Um, or is that just how they behave so... by default? That's just how they behave. Really? 
Uh, when you have oh. so the reason why it, it so it's like so it I'm pretty sure it does it based on like distance between particles. So when that is constant, it will like do more of a lightning sort of effect. But in something like this, that's like changing all the time, and so they're redrawing those connections because uh, the particles are expanding like, at different rates. Yeah. Right. And, okay. And, okay. And also, just like the relationship between, since they're all moving in a different direction, the relationships between them change. Uh, and so, like, yeah, it's um, it draws it, and it's drawing like ten ribbons, and they're connecting to the center. And then I also have like a width over trail thing here so that it's more concentrated in the center. Um, but no, nah, this is like, it's. I'm basically just doing a burst of particles in a sphere shape. Uh, that's it. Dang. That's really cool. How long did that one take you? I think this took two hours, something like that. It's not too long. Okay. Nice. Um. But yeah, let's look at let's look at some of the other stuff I've been doing. Uh, I do, I, for Cameron's sake, I do want to show off how the swarm effect has has changed. Uh, so let's see. So we go here. Um, yeah. So so start speed now looks like this. <laughs> Because I want some of them to to go really fast and escape the like gravity force field, but I want most of them to be pretty small, or not like escape, but get close. Right. Oh, do you want to talk about the force field for a minute? Oh yeah. Um. So in your particle systems, you can turn on a thing called external forces, and when you do that, uh, basically there's another thing under the effects drop down called a uh, particle system force field and basically anything in that will be affected by the field uh and in this case we're using it to have like sort of a, a gravity thing so they get pulled towards the center uh but you could i think i think theoretically you could probably use it to do other stuff uh like you can actually yeah field. Like do, if you, you could do go the into the force field really quick, you can change that to be, I think if you do a negative strength. It'll probably just like push it out, right? Yeah. I, I believe that's, yeah. Yes. And then any of them inside of that focus, there's that like central sphere. Those ones seem to be acting funny, but anything outside of that gets like forced out. Yeah, weird. Uh, but yeah, you can you can use these for various things. Um, but if you actually want them to like float down to the ground, what I would do instead of using like a force field is I would go into uh, there's something called force over lifetime, and if you check this and like apply a negative y velocity in, uh, you probably want to do this in world space. Uh, then like. You wouldn't have it be this strong, but you could, you know, make them fall to the ground. Uh, I always do... just use a gravity modifier. Oh, is there a gravity modifier? Where, where the fuck is at that? The very... <laughs> at the top of the particle system. It's like halfway down right there. Like up through. Oh, the... shit. Yeah. I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just never, like, I've. it's been a bit. The way you did gravity before, I think, was different, but I could just be wrong, you know? Yeah, that seems yeah. easier. Uh, but you can do, like, a force over time, over lifetime, if you want to uh, do something like that. I think force over time might be better if you're looking for something that isn't necessarily vertical. But yeah. if you wanted some sort of, like, horizontal force, that'd be really easy with that module. Yeah, yeah. Um... Uh, anyway, instead of just talking about this, like, I'll, let's show what it actually looks like. Uh, where is... So we want to turn on this driver, and it'll just spawn the swarm for us. Yeah, so you can see it, like, it's circling the enemy. Uh, and if you press E, then it will leave the particles behind. Looks neat. 
Uh, and the weird size thing that I did, which I was talking about uh, earlier, is um, there's two. This is both size by speed and size over lifetime, because like over the lifetime of the particles, I want them to uh, fade away. But I also want the slower ones to be bigger because that way when it leaves behind, a, because like when it leaves behind a particle, those particles are a lot slower because they were being pulled by the gravity field. And so like, I want those to be big so that it's really obvious um, that, hey, this is actually leaving stuff behind in a trail. Uh, and it, it reads a lot better in like the camera angle of the game if I make those larger. Essentially, they're they're like three times bigger when they are uh, when they're at zero velocity. Uh, anyway, let's show off lightning. This one is not as polished as some of my other stuff because I just did this today. But oh, I guess that is also there. Uh. Yeah, so this is chain lightning. It it goes between all the things. Uh when does this appear in game? This is for the new uh electric round effect. Basically when enemies get hit, uh the it'll chain lightning between them. And I think that's supposed to represent that they're stunned. I'm not sure. They asked for a chain lightning effect. <laughs> Alright. That's really cool, though. Yeah, I ended up doing something completely different from what I thought I was going to do. Or not completely different, but like kind of different. Because originally I was like, oh, OK, I'll make a triangle and then I'll spawn particles in that triangle and I'll uh, like move them around and do a ribbon between them. And I did do a ribbon. There's like five ribbons there. Uh, but I didn't end up using a circuit a triangle at all this is a sphere because a the triangle kind of just looked bad <laughs> uh and b the sphere uh is the same in all directions so it doesn't really i don't have to fuck with any angles when i'm lurping between different points which is just really nice yeah uh, you could just move it and it can works. you move enemies around in real time and it like changes yeah. the direction uh, let me show that off yeah, so if I, like, I zoom out a bit. Yeah, so, oh, wait, that's not the, ooh, that's not the <laughs> enemy. That's the, it's just the body. I hate that it does that. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. That's really cool. And I don't know if they actually want this to loop or not. I should probably put in something in case they decide, hey, we don't want this to loop. Uh... Why? Why does it automatically select that? I don't want to move that. <laughs> I want to move the prefab. It's it's okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's neat. And apparently, if I move it correctly, I can even create curves. <laughs> Just gonna create my own three D modeling program <laughs> based on based on drawing lightning between uh between points. The world's um, most dangerous game of ping pong. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's what I worked on today, and then like there's a bunch of other stuff I could show off. Like there is, um, let's see, that's a that's the thing Cameron did. We could show that off if we want. Uh, this is. Oh, why is it not letting me play? Oh, that's right, because this is a bunch of sub systems this is like a hit effect uh and you can really see here why i turn off selection outline because it looks kind of terrible yeah and this is why i will often have like a little game window and also uh because i don't have two monitors <laughs> And I would really like two monitors, honestly, after this semester, because it's like it'd be so much nicer to just have the game view on a separate monitor. Oh well. Um 
but yeah, uh, I don't. Let's see, what other stuff is here? There's the leaf shockwave, I guess. I. This is like a a hurt effect. Uh, so when the player gets hurt, you can see it kind of looks like blood right now. It was supposed to be leaves. I'm kind of cool with it being blood, but I think I might change it to make it more obvious that it's that it's leaves. Um. And then there's like there's a few other things, uh, mostly stuff for enemies. Oh, I did make this grass. It's all me. <laughs> Look at it. I I spent a lot of time on this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Um, yeah, I, I don't have too much else, too much else to show off. Um. So, uh, for the chain lightning, can you get? Does it just always go between all the enemies, or can you give it, like, a list of enemies to loop between? Uh, it's just a list. It, it loops between a list of game objects, so I could make it go between all of the grass if I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, it doesn't go between all the enemies. It's just whatever list of enemies you pass into the script. Got you. Uh, any other questions? Well, uh, all right. I'm trying to think if there's like anything else I have that'd be cool to show off. Um, Let's see. There, there's like a little burrow effect, which is kind of neat. Um, oh wait, that's the wrong thing. Hmm. Oh, I guess it's only showing the VFX graph, which is not as cool as the whole thing. But yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really have anything else, uh, left to show off. So um, unless there's a question, I, I think we could probably call it here. Cool. Really appreciate the workshop. Cool effects. And the ribbons, I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> Something to play with. Yeah, yeah, it's real. Ribbons are neat. Uh, I've. I kind of figured that out as I was working on the energy shockwave effect, and then I was like, oh, hey, this is how they do one of the effects in uh, Risk of Rain 2. I understand now. Oh, That's so way simpler than than having to code your own thing for it. That's super easy. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really like doing VFX, so I hope that uh, some of you experiment you know just try shit out uh it's really fun it's you can make stuff that looks really cool so yeah um thanks for coming thanks for listening to me blather <laughs>